David Edward and Noah Glicksman discuss Noah's book, Naked After Divorce. Noah, how are you? I am well. How are you? I'm doing really good. I'm in Ocala, Florida, and I think you just told me you're somewhere way north, like the North Pole or Canada or something. Is that right? You can see how cold it is here. From what I'm- <laughs> yeah, you're. I think you're the first person I've interviewed from Mexico. I am not from Mexico. I live in Mexico. Right, who is in Mexico. Exactly. That, that's wonderful. Well, Noah, we're talking because you have a book that is poised, as I understand it, to, to be released onto the world at any moment. Is that right? Yes. Very. And what is that book called? That book is titled Naked After Divorce. It's an interesting book. Now, is that historical fiction or is it uh, uh, self-help or is it what, what kind of book is it? It is not fiction. It is not self-help. <laughs> you can use it as self-help and you can read it as if it were fiction, but it's actually um, short stories and it's a memoir of um, the first three years for my separation and onwards, finding my my way from we back to me. Yep, that, and I think I think, well, and you have the first the first bit of the book is actually available on your website now, right for free. For free, anyone who wants to read it, I I as as a writer and as a reader, there's very few things in life that are as frustrating as getting a book that you're excited about and then reading the first few pages and being like, oh, so disappointed. I don't want this happening to anyone. I want anyone that reads my book to know what they're getting into because the title is ambiguous on purpose. So I want no surprises. Go ahead. You can read the introduction. You can read the first chapter and decide if this is for you. You know, I think that's great. And and also, you know, I, 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 not jokingly, but but tongue in cheek, I, I said self help book because um, to demonstrate my my absolute ignorance, one of the first things I said to you was, "Oh, is this a self help book?" <laughs> and you, you said, "No." <laughs> so why why don't you why don't you give give us a little bit of more insight into in, into what someone might get from reading the book, and then let's talk about kind of the process you went through of writing it. Yeah. So I do mention in the introduction that the book. I mean, you can live vicariously through me. You can be inspired by the story I lived. But my point is, I wish everybody would find their own definition of normal. You know, we are human beings. We love validation. We love feeling that we are part of a tribe, that we think alike. We feel less alone also. That is one of the points of the book. I think, not I think, I know that most people that go through a breakup, either a divorce or or a breakup without having, you know, the official papers to sign, um, the worst things they feel is loneliness and self-doubt. Mm. Mm. One, we validate those feelings or we see someone going through something similar, we feel less alone. Oh, it's not just happening to me. So that's points. And another one is everybody has a different path. I was surprised by the path I took. I was completely shocked while I was living the book and while I was writing the book. It was very uncharacteristic of me. You know, I, I think that's interesting. And I think, you know, the experience, it, it's, 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 and, and I've read the, just what you have available at this point. So the book's not out, so I've not been able to read the whole thing. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's a traumatic event. And w- what resonated with me is not a relationship event, but my brother, um, my younger brother by four years, um, he o- OD'd on cocaine like overnight, like, like in 2006 and died. I mean, very suddenly, just all out of nowhere. And that was the same kind of thing where there was the day before and then there was the day after. And the day after was different enough um, that I kind of had to, you know, reconsider a lot of things um, and, and just re- I don't want to say reexamine. I hate to, you know, some of these words you hear them. And, 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 and you get tired of hearing on when other people say them, but then you're trying to, you're trying to explain it. And they're the only words you have, you know, but so I, I think your experience is broader than just relationships. Although certainly uh, that does, that is its focus. Um, I, I think you can very clearly see throughout the book that I go through the five stages of grief. So the, the, the very first bit that you read, you can still see the denial And I question my denial. I'm still understanding things that I'm like, I'm just realizing them. I'm just kind of waking up to what the separation is going to bring into my life. 
And then through through later chapters, you can really see me moving on from denial to, to anger, to negotiation, to depression, to acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I go through that with my coffee every morning, the whole cycle. It's it's just terrible. <laughs> so, so, so walk me through. So, so, you know, you, you're dealing with this event. Um, you get some perspective on it. Uh, and somehow it, how does it go from, from your life to this book? So it goes through my life to this book because um, I'm a writer. I write a lot. And writing is a wonderful tool for processing emotions, for healing. And as a coach and as a writer, I have the combination of both tools to help myself out. So I just wrote a lot of the things that happened to me to process them. And at some point, for some reason, I showed a couple of my short stories to very close friends. And they were very different than what's coming out of the book. They, had a, they were almost like written porn. And I was really embarrassed to show it to them. And I think that's also one of the reasons I wanted to show it to them because it was so uncharacteristic. Um, and, um, and it developed from there. Interesting. It, oh, because they're like, is this going to be a book? And I'm like, I didn't think so. But then there were so many stories that I wanted to share. And I could see the five stages of grief unfolding. And that's how it translated from my life to being a book. It was just, it, it, it started, and that's why it's not a self-help book. It could be, you know, you could help yourself through reading the book, but it's not. And as a coach, a lot of people ask me that. And I'm like, no, it's not self-promoting and it's not self-help. It is really a memoir of short stories. And that's how it translated just from using it as a healing tool into maybe gifting it to other people as a healing tool for themselves too. Look, I, I think the fact that you're not writing it as a self-help book, it, it just makes it all that much stronger. I, I, I think that it, it's just more honest, right? Because it's not necessarily you're saying, read this and feel better. You're, you're saying, see, uh, we're all dealing with stuff and, and, and maybe seeing what others deal with will help. Maybe it won't, but at least it's interesting. <laughs> and it's certainly first, the first chapter is interesting, you know, if nothing else. So uh, um, yeah. I finally found that title that fits so beautifully, naked after divorce, that's really what it means. I mean, the, the, the book is told through a very specific perspective of sex, love, and intimacy, but it's not just that naked. It's the emotional naked. Yeah. yeah. All the things that go through my mind, when you read, there's a lot of inner dialogue and a lot of feelings and a lot of processing. And I think it could be very helpful because a lot of it I also phrase as questions. Like, I don't have the answers. I didn't have the answers to them then. Some of them I have now. Some of them are rhetorical questions and never really reach a final answer. And I think that element of it could be helpful as a self-help book. So, so, so let's go through the process of writing this. Um, how long did it take from, it sounds like you had notes and journals and stuff, but from the time you decided this was a book, to the time it was a book and, and, and it's getting, I guess, in, in the release shoot, how long did that take? First, I uh, never looked at my notes. I had written about a lot of the stories as they happen, again, to process them. But once I wrote those couple of stories and showed to my friends and decided it was going to be a book, I started it from scratch. Okay. And I couldn't stop writing. Some days I would look at my watch and it was three in the morning. And I was like, I got to get some sleep. I just completely lost track of time. Uh, most of my interaction with the world <laughs> just came to a halt. And it was just pouring out of me. It took me about to write the first manuscript. It took me about three weeks. Wow. That's, and, and so I guess this was an all consuming. It just became you to get it from in here right to out there. Um, now, how long, how long I, ago was that three weeks? Oh, wow. It was months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not, I mean, the, the final version that's coming out has the introduction and 13 chapters. There are five additional chapters that I edited out. Oh, okay. So the book was even, you know, bigger than it is now. Right. So, it, and that was, that was the true surprise of writing a book. Interesting. Interesting. So what, what, what will someone get uh, from reading this book when it comes out and if they, if they pick it up, um, just be entertained or is, is there, are there, is there messaging at different levels? 
I think it's all of it. I think for some people, it's entertaining. For some people, it has that element of voyeurism because it does talk about sex, love, and intimacy. And some people, it's not an erotic novel, but um, I've never read one, I have to admit. But I think it, it's some, some chapters come pretty close to it. Um, some chapters are have that element of self-help because they really question where I am and who I am and what happens next. Um, and some of it is just validation and feeling less alone mm. and doubting yourself less, finding your path, finding your normal, maybe. And this is what I feel when I talk to people in real life and I incorporate this into my work as a coach that um, by showing our own vulnerability, we allowed ours, others to be vulnerable too. So maybe through my vulnerability, and I had to process a lot. I mean, it is naked <laughs> and all kinds of naked. And I'm exposing myself in a way. I was always a very private person. I, I'm exposing myself in an extreme way. And I hope that inspires people, not necessarily to expose themselves, allow themselves to, to live to just live life in the way that they want to live without the constraints of, of society, of marriage, of boundaries, of taboos, um, either genera generational or cultural, or, you know, just, just embrace who you are or who you want to be. Own it. Yeah. Are, are you nervous at all? Or is any trepidation about having this thing come out? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a record? Is that a rhetorical question? Uh, it's a finishing question. <laughs> oh, I'm excited and thrilled, and at the same time, I am terrified. Yeah. I, my insides are just shaking all the time. Every time I talk about the book, every time I was just working with my editor, I work with her every day till two, and today we finish a quarter to two, so I could breathe for a second before we spoke. And the whole time, a lot of times when I'm talking to her, I'm like, okay, this is triggering me. Like we need to, you know, move on to the next paragraph or um, am I really publishing this? Like yeah. that yeah. process, a lot of questions about why am I doing this? Who am, I, who am I doing this for? I mean, there's so many purposes and reasons to do it. And still there's just as many doubts and fears. Right. And that... that that's the beauty of it that also with breakups and divorce, you have a lot of fear and doubts and pain, but don't let it overpower other feelings like joy, pleasure, and adventure. I mean, adventure isn't a feeling, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let it stop you from leaving, from, from just doing things. So the same thing, I'm not letting my fears and doubts stop me from publishing the book, but it doesn't mean that they're not there. Right, right. So so when is there, is there a, uh, what, what is the official date that all of us who, who, who are interested in, and we, we're, we want to go get it, uh, I'll put a link up to your website up, but is there, is there an official date that the book will be out? So the official date is soon. <laughs> <laughs> because the process has been very, I mean, I, I never worked in anything in publishing, so I'm just finding out more and more things. Yeah. But the specific and hopeful date is July. Okay. Okay, well, we're recording this at the end of June, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so so soon. Very, very final stages of of editing, and then it's just proofreading and formatting it. Okay, all right. Well, look, it it, it it is better to finish the cake in the oven right before you serve it, uh, because you know people with books um, they expect perfection. So you're doing the right thing. It's not a doubt in my mind. Um, okay. Well, Noah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, the book is Naked After Divorce, um, and it comes out soon. <laughs> well, tell you what, look, once it's out, let me know, and I'll follow up with you. And if you get another book out or, or any, any short stories you, you want to talk about, I'd be more than happy to talk about that with you, too. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I just want to share something small with you all that if you are interested in reading the book, I know the link's going to be somewhere in the video, mm -hmm. but it's remember because it's the name of the book, nakedafterdivorce.com. Yeah, just be careful when you're searching Google. Um, oh, another thing I learned. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I searched for it too. It was like, okay. you know. <laughs> not safe for work. <laughs> All right, no, thank you. I'll talk to you later. You're done. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.